Okay, so point of view statement. Um, I guess we could go to the Mad Libs version, right? So basically, user plus need insight, right? What I would say instead of user, I would say Sapna. Needs a, a takeout <laughs> shop that fits into her schedule is affordable. So now, what we're going to do now is uh, oh, memorize that. And, <laughs> no, 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 that's good, that's good, that's good. See, the whole, we're limited space here. We probably wouldn't have deleted that. We were in that down. So now the last thing, let's go create some how might we statements, guys. You, you guys ready to create some how might we statements? So let's, let's, let's do that here. How might we help Sap, poor Sapna? It's her struggles of not starving to death in her busy schedule, right? <laughs> Say, how might we build a better takeout container? I would say this, like how we might highlight choices or new recommendations or something like that. What? If I had any confusion over the two, what I would do is I would break that up and then I'd write this one up because what we're going to do is we're doing another level uh, of granularity of things. So if it's a duplication, then they'll both get picked or one of the two be picked and I don't care. If, it, if, if there is some new one there that later on goes between this one and that one, then I've killed the one that I didn't like and I got the one that I did. So do you understand what I'm saying? So go. So you add this, any kind of confusion, write it down, right? We're, in this case, we're going for quantity. How might sap now? No, no, no. Here we go. Or not? No, but like, how about this? How about sap? How does shit happen? Share her reviews with friends, right? And yes, there's definitely some people in the audience who are going to say that this one is, is sort of out of out of out of out of context, right? Yeah. Right. In the end of the day, sometimes I really don't care because I want quantity here. And we'll do, we'll do the threshing, we'll do the, sh the wheat floor, the shaft, you know, that type of thing on, on later on, right? And so I'm okay with putting that down there because in reality, if there's one kind of guiding rule here is that the build on the others and all that other stuff, what it does is it allows me to say, hey, there's a couple here, even you saw it today, we ended up with a terminology or verbiage mm -hmm. that was better because somebody started with something, then we corrected it a bit, and we started again, and we ran again. I would rather write it down and then have it on the wall and correct it than not have it at all. It's the whole thing of like when we talked about even testing. If you, you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. So like we have that brainstorming happens all the time. So if you had to do the facilitation, here's another hint. People are going to like, oh, and they see something and they yell it out. And I will tell them right away. First of all, one conversation is time. But secondly, I tell them, if you didn't write it down, it doesn't exist. And then I hear the scribbling of the Sharpie, and then I, <laughs> I think of innovation, right? <laughs> Right, okay. So, okay. So, probably would probably normally go on quite a bit longer because the first ideas that you have are usually pretty good. The ideas in the middle sometimes can get bland, and then the ideas at the end are usually the type of really good. It has a lot to do with, uh, there's, uh, I think there's a couple studies on that, but the idea is like you have the obvious ideas that start here, and you have the wild ideas here, and you might have a little lull. Sometimes you have to get past this in order to get that idea here. You know, obviously these ones are the low hanging fruit even here. We could have stopped this project and only had this bit, but we would have lost this time a bit. So as a facilitator for this type of stuff, I think you do need to have a little bit of a play of when you think the group is going on course, when when and stuff like that. But also, yeah, like I said, like some of these ideas, like, you know, the review one came up to the sort of near the end, you know, obviously the takeout was very at the top, but even then you'll see a type of curve. So now let's go to the last kind of bit. And this is the last piece of empathy where we sort of go again. At that point in time, once we've done the empathy, we will go to the, we're sort of in the define idea part, but the idea is like, there's eight ideas here. What do you guys think? There's no magic number on this one, but what do you think is sort of really, really important? I'm going to show you the process, whether the model is quite different. So what I do is oftentimes, 
actually, it's funny that we had actually talked about this, Edvini and I, about the break, about what's the difference between sort of what design thinking is compared to some of the other model. What I wanted to say, and what I hope I was able to communicate, was the fact that previously what we did is we sold product and ideas based off of specification sheets. Okay? Bunch of features, basically a feature sheet, and our, all our sales and battle cards are sort of done on this type of communication, right? And oftentimes, when we go into a meeting, we sell people say, you know, our product does. It, it, we fill an RFP or something, eight of the nine things that you're asked for and stuff like that. It's very feature driven, and it's usually a checkbox, good or bad, we don't even know. Like it's it's sold in the initial part of it. That's because we used to build products based off features, and so what I said is the difference between design thinking is now what we're doing is we're backing up one type of problem. So not what, the, what do people want, what is the need? And it's interesting enough, if you kind of look back at this, and if we were to approach a different model, and I'd interviewed Ashmini, or didn't interview her and say, I want to build out the world's best takeout place. <coughs> I might have, you know, provide the cheapest food that people could get going because I think price is the only thing, or a type of that. I would miss some of these other ones. Sometimes you get something that's really, really, really important, but you didn't know. Like, for example, faster was sort of an obvious one. Like, I mean, McDonald's sort of invented that whole model. If you look at fast food history, of the idea, of, you know, you get like the 30 second hamburger. The idea is like, there should be nothing stopping between you and them getting their food and you getting their money. <laughs> I've put it in an ironic, satirical way. This one, probably, when we're talking about takeout service and we're talking about price, if we had built that out, we might have totally missed out the takeout container. We might have gone through a more economy takeout container that leaked or something like that. But really, her need is like, if it leaked once on her, she probably would have never gone back again, right? Now, we could have user tested that afterwards, but you're so far down that point, then what we're doing is we have to do a tweak. So what we do is say one container over another container. What happens is with design thinking, and I'm going to do a little stretching here, but say, say it takes you know, this faster and this container. So say we build a design takeout place that's sort of like a buffet format that we have a, a, a container that's non-spillable, but you go in and you pick up your food and then you select and you put in your container and you, leave, you pay for it and you leave. And we actually have that downtown core. We have a couple of Michellos and stuff like that. You buy food by, basically by the pound. Very fast. A lot of people love the service, right? Very fast. Container is good. It, good enough. I would say they probably could be in a better container. But say they had, go with me for a bit. If they had a better container, they had a good price, very efficient service, bingo, bango, you have a good model. But you, if you had started building a restaurant and you said, okay, well, I wanted to have like, you know, samples of food or something like that, they, they, it, it, the way that we're attacking a problem differently. Because in that saying, what we said is, what does Sapa need? She needs a way to get good container. She needs non-confusing memory, menu, and then faster, right? And we talked about samples. Well, we can't really give her samples, but in buffet style, you'll see what's there. So it's not like Wayne Powell's flying chicken. The idea is like Chinese people love the way something sounds. So like a dim sum chicken feet is called Phoenix feet. Now, if I were to directly translate that, people would say, when's the last time you've seen a Phoenix? Right? Right? Because what they do is they, they don't want to sometimes tell you exactly what it's it's made of or it's in there. <laughs> but that's the real practical aspect. But the idea is here, uh, unfortunately, that, that, that happens a lot in restaurants. They say, uh, chef's special, chef special type of thing. And uh, Marcello's model, where you're, you're in a buffet, you're going in, you, you, don't, you see what you get. The name doesn't matter because you know what it is, right? So that was one of her needs. So that's when we came up to that type of model. That's where you're going to come up with some stuff. So hopefully, I'm giving you kind of a big, I'm not into the actual idea and the design part and the prototyping, but hopefully you're giving you an idea of one of the tools of that empathy part of design thinking that you can have. So where you can build that into your radical fail often, fail cheaply, first off, very close to the user type of model. And then later on when you're in the build, switch it over and you can use like the usability testing to do the fine turning tweak. In that case, what it'd be with Marcello's if the container kind of not so great, but everything else is great, then we have a container that is, doesn't spill and keeps your food warm and could keep the price at the same thing, it's a win-win situation, right? Because it doesn't change their business model, right? Thanks, guys.